in Ephesians 5 and basically said, I would commit my life to you <laughs> and die for you. Being mindful of like bringing these moments to God and like actively like yeah. praying. Now we living together and it's all this stuff popping up Maybe. that is like, oh, this is when you, the classic, she changed. <laughs> All right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back for another episode of Bowden Matrimony. My name is Robert Bowden, and to my right, <laughs> I have uh, my wife. Corey Bolden. And we have new mics. Yeah, new, new little well, setup. New well, mic the mics stands. are the same, but we have new mic stands. Come on, we're coming up in the world. Coming on up. Um, very cool. So... Um, today, we would like to dig into a topic that is not often talked about, but I believe that it's some benefit to talk about it because I think it can provide uh, some clarity in how we think about things for a lot of people. Um, and that topic is just simply contentment. That's not a word that you say every day, but it is one that has some substance to it when you really understand it. Uh, so I guess we can just start there. When you hear the word, what's your initial like gut reaction, or how do you think about it? You know, just in hearing it, what's your what's your initial reaction? Like being content, yeah. contentment. Um, I think of peace, like being at peace with where you are. Um, not feeling the need to prove anything to anyone or um meet some you know meet some standard some some worldly or man-made standard um you're not really thinking about or caring too much about what people think of you or um where you want to be versus where you are so i just think to wrap that all up just peace peace yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think about very similar, <clears throat> like a type of fulfillment. Yeah, that's like it's feeling very full. Yeah, no matter the situation or circumstance. Um, I, I think about you know I don't know what the quote was. I may butcher it, but uh, when it came to contentment, whoever it was that I was listening to at the moment said that I don't think about my I don't think less about myself I think about myself less. less yeah so like that's just it like no matter what happens no matter what the circumstance is like I I'm full I'm mm -hmm. good <laughs> um despite whatever else happens yeah. that is outside of my control uh so <clears throat> I just wrote uh this basic definition of what what it is um I got freedom from worry or restlessness mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, and I got a peaceful satisfaction and I thought that satisfaction was a good word to use there because it's sort of a emotional word, mm -hmm. um, which says a lot. So like, so to frame the conversation, do you feel as though, well, before we even get into that in 2024 is kind of hard to be content because we are exposed to everybody's life at all moments of the day. We got social media. We can get in touch with each other right. literally all the time. So you see, we call it the keeping up with the Joneses. You see everybody doing everything mm -hmm. and you, whether you, in, whether you know it or not, you're comparing mm -hmm. yourself to other people and what they have going on. Right. So that can be dangerous if you don't recognize, you know, what's actually happening inside of you. Right. And that's kind of the, the framework of the conversation, like for us uh, as a unit, as well as individually, do you really feel content with where you are? Like just having recently being married, like we got other things going on with your work, with this, with that. Like there's a lot of things that um, that you can be content with, but maybe you're not. Mm hmm. Uh, are you based on the definition that we've come up with? Are you really content? That's a great question. I would say yes. Um, of course, there are things being content doesn't mean that you don't have any desires. Like, you know, of course, 
um, I desire to live in a bigger home or, you know, but with that said, I am content with where we are. Like, I love our home. I love our life. Um, I love just where God has us in this season of our lives. And I think we can't really talk about contentment without stewardship. I think they play hand in hand because um, what helps me be content is learning how to steward what I have now, what God has given us now. So when, for example, when I say I want a bigger, I would like or desire to have a bigger home, you know, so we can host more, so we can have, you know, more space when we, you know, start having kids and growing our family. However, you know, I have to be content with where we are now and stewarding where we are now, meaning like, how am I maintaining our home now? You know, am I, are we keeping our whole, uh, our condo clean? Are we, you know, um, paying the bills on time? We just recently talked about how we manage our finances. Like all of those things play a part in contentment. contentment. And I think when we um, are diligent and disciplined in putting like these systems and different um, rhythms and processes in place, you know, it does help bring more of that contentment, more of that fulfillment that you're talking about. So to answer your question, yes, I would say I am, I would, I am very content with where we are. Yeah, that's, you said a lot of good things, but mainly what I took away from what you said is like being present, like in present, the moment, yes. like recognizing what's happening around you and being able and willing to look around and appreciate those things. Right. Uh, so many times we always looking for the next thing. Mm -hmm. So we pray to God, God give us what we want. And then we happy for the day. And then tomorrow we get on Instagram and somebody else got a, a newer version of the Corvette and they're like, ah, like I got to get the next one. Like when, when does it stop? Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you're not checking those things constantly, that's pretty hard to do. Like your your life is constantly moving the goalpost. Like mm -hmm. the goalpost is never set and set yeah. or set and steady. It's just moving based on other people and, and other things. And I think that's that's the society and the culture, you know, that we live in. And I think it's orchestrated that way for a reason, you know, to keep people like really we we live in a consume a, a culture that's centered on consumerism so it's really to keep people wanting more spending more um and what's that book that you you've been reading again yeah. psychology of money psychology of money when uh i'm gonna butcher the quote but when he said like you desire less oh because uh, you're putting us on the spot now i'm like all hey, right i'm gonna try <laughs> if you want to if you want to save more, you spend less. To spend less, you just have to desire less. And when you desire less, you, you care, care less, less about what people think about you. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that and, and that is so true because I've noticed over the last maybe two to three years, my desires have changed and like I have desire, my desires are more are less centered on like centered on what people think of me or my care, what I care about. Um, I used to really be like an impulsive, like frivolous spender and like buy things that I thought looked nice or um, and and I would buy them and then I would get them and then I'd be like, this don't look right on me. Yeah, let's let's take just... a second to praise God that she's been delivered. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's she's changed that. God, God has renewed her mind. God knew that I needed <laughs> a financial planner for a husband because I God was, has delivered her. Yeah, but I mean, I still like to have nice things. I still, you know, um, I'm into what I, you know, my style more so, like how I wear things, how I put things together. But I'm, I've am i learned a lot more to do better with like piecing different things. I can wear the same stuff and switch them around uh, different, different ways, ways yeah. and look like I'm wearing something new. But um, all that to say, like I definitely have noticed 
uh, a decrease in how I, what I care about um, in terms of like how I appear or am perceived by other people and an increase in my confidence. Yeah. And that comes, you know, with my relationship with Christ. And yeah, and in that comes that contentment that we're talking about, so. Yeah, that's really good. So you just threw like the alley-oop to go into another version of the conversation, which is of course from scripture and the scripture that we go dig into is often uh, taken a little bit out of context. Yeah, and let's you already t- know let's which please, one I'm talking about. Let's talk about that, yeah. <laughs> oh, so Philippians 4, 13 um, is the one that we typically go to right away. Can we start at 11 now? That's where we're supposed to start. Okay, to get okay, the context, get the context. We usually just jump to 13 right away. Okay. Um, so let's pull that up and read it, see what they, see what we got to say there. Um. <clears throat> uh, Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, that sounds like poetry when you read that. I never really heard it in that way before. Um, But he said a lot there. Um, Depending on the version that you read, he says um, circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that's the word that jumps out to me. Like, I don't care where I am. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's around me in any circumstance and every circumstance. Like, I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and this concept is really big. And this book that I've been reading is called The Daily Stoic. Mm-hmm. Like, Stoicism mm-hmm. is this thing that has become popular. I don't know where it came from or the history or anything like that. But a lot of philosophers, like, this is their thing. And that's basically to detach yourself from everything, essentially, that is material. Therefore, you have no expectations and therefore you can't be disappointed and yeah. therefore you're happy um that can work to an extent um but what paul is saying here is what you were saying before we kind of flipped the conversation is that i'm content in christ mm-hmm. if i'm in christ there's no circumstance that can happen that will bring me far from him or have me in a situation where i feel as though i'm far from him right um, that's the the anchor and right. Unfortunately, a lot of times we just go straight to 13 and be like, I can do all things through Christ that give me the strength. It's like, well, yeah, that's true. Um, But we focus so much on the positive side where we get in those seasons where it's like you kind of scratching and warring, but we we, we don't have, you know, the context to say like, hey, Paul was talking about both ends of the spectrum here. Well, I would even say that I've, I've heard and I've used that last piece of the scripture like i can do all things through christ as like more about my self will Mm. like more like whatever i put my mind to christ is going to give me what i need to do to do it and it's like and i've heard it used often in that context where it's like there's so much more to that it's saying in in any situation that i'm in that is outside of my control (laughs) because it's framing it as if we are the ones who's driving and Christ is just kind of right, giving right, us right. giving us what we need. Like, yeah, like seat, more like, of a come mean, on, Christ. You, right. More of a was, means to an end yeah. type thing rather than like he is like the 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 one who is like giving me the strength to endure in any situation. Yeah. So Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because he is sovereign. He has yeah. control over everything, knows everything and can control everything. So from Paul's situation here, it's like, bro, what does it matter for me to be concerned or worried or anxious? If I'm in him, he go figure it out. Like, right. At it's some like, point, of course, we do what we can and, and control what we can't control. But for the things outside that I'm going to just have to trust in something. And that's what and that's the other piece of it that I was going to um, highlight is that contentment is knowing where my control is. Ends. Yeah. <laughs> and like trusting God with everything else, like trusting him that, okay, 
like you said, I'm going to do what I can, what's in my power, do my part, and then everything else. I trust. Well, I trust you with everything any anyway, but with especially with what's outside of my control. Yeah. And I'm content with that. So Yeah. So let's clarify or not even clarify, but add context. Context is key here. Mm-hmm. Uh for the people who say like y'all just don't want to work hard. Like y'all just, you know, y'all y'all ain't ambitious or you ain't this or you ain't that. The conversation turns from contentment to complacency. Complacency. And there yeah. is a difference there because I can become so comfortable in where I am that I have no desire to, to do more. more. Yeah. And God may be calling me to a place where he's needing me to do more. And mm-hmm. and I, I just don't want to do it because things are fine. And why would I ever change? Like everything's good. So talk about that. How do you see that playing out for for people when it comes to contentment and being like truly fulfilled where you are versus still having like goals, ambitions and things that you want to do? Yeah, I think it's a two way thing. Contentment. I can be content with the things that are around me, like more of an external thing. But then I know that there's always work to do internally. Mm-hmm. I, it's it's really a paradox because it's like I'm confident I'm at peace with where I am, but I know that God has more, and not more in the sense of like like material possessions. Those things can be added. Like Matthew six thirty three says, "Seek first the key, the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you." But when I focus on, like, I know that God has more for me, more so in my character, like character development and my spiritual growth and like, because we all have blind spots, right? And so in those things, as I'm seeking the Lord, like, Lord, reveal, help me to reveal my blind spots and show me the areas that need to be refined and strengthened and sharpened in doing that, like, I am working like yeah. I, I'm working in partnership with God to, you know, um, move, move in a in a forward direction. Mm-hmm. And as as my character, as I'm developing internally, then my external environment slowly, incrementally changes as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a great example. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that reminds me of a scripture. It says, he who is faithful with little will also be faithful with much. Mm -hmm. So basically saying, if you're not stewarding Mm -hmm. or taking care of or being a good manager of the little that I've given you today, why on earth would I ever give you something in the future that is more? (laughs) Yeah, that's like the parable of the, of the, is it the parable of the, not the sower. But the talents, talents. Yeah. 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 So if you're not using your gift well, or if you're not stewarding your gift or growing your gift, why do you need the gift? Yeah. Like I'm going to take it and give it to somebody else, which is exactly what happened in the parable of the talents. Like I'm going to give it to the people who are actually doing the work and you can just sit there and be yeah. complacent about where you are and how things are, are going fine. When I've had all of this for you, I'm, I'm giving you the land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. And you just don't want to take it. You don't want to do the work. I would say a, another practical example for me personally is like I've been writing my book for a long time, <laughs> but now I'm at the current iteration that I'm writing I'm content with like, I'm like, this is it. This is the book that God has been like preparing and pruning and refining me to write over the last decade and some change. I'm content with where it is, with where I am with the book, but I also know that I'm not going to, I can't be complacent and just be like, Oh, okay. I'm good. Like I, I, I have to continue working to finish it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's more so my what I always I know no matter where I am or what I accomplish, there's always I'm on assignment. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm on this earth, there is something that God still has me here to do. He's calling me to do. 
And so in that sense, I won't just be content to be like, all right, I've even when I do publish the book, like, all right, I've I've done no, there's still yeah. there's still more. All right, guys, what, what you got for yeah. me next? So Yeah. Yeah, it's uh you shared this in the speech that you did. Uh just Oh yeah, y'all. Me. I've been going to Toastmasters. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. for yeah. Yeah, you can explain. I that. was just gonna say Toastmasters, that's like a non profit organization. It's a club. They have chapters all over the US where um local chapters where it's a, a club that's centered an uh, organization centered on help, helping people develop, um, sharpen their communication and speaking skills. And that was something that I always like was very self conscious about and lacked confidence in that area. And so over the last year or so I started going to Toastmasters and, um, you know, it has really helped me with developing my confidence and my speaking. And so I just did a, a speech the other night and that's what Rob, Rob is referring yeah, to. Yeah, I was just going to pull the verse that you used in that, which was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. So with that being said, like oftentimes we feel like we just got to be trying to figure it out and doing mm-hmm. all this stuff. And you're just bouncing from thing to thing when God is just telling you to sit down. <laughs> um, and that's hard to do. And I yeah. get that. But when you can really just obey what he's telling you to do specifically and be content in knowing that everything outside of your control is in his control. Yep. Yep. That's when that's you it. can find that true fulfillment yeah. and, and trusting in his plan rather than what you want to the outcome to be. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's contentment one on one. Did we break yeah. it down uh, well enough? Is it anything Wrap that we need to add? Maybe just wrap up with a takeaway, a couple of takeaways. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is uh just just finding a balance of, you know, contentment and, and not being complacent. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a balance and it takes a lot of discernment to be able to know, mm-hmm. you know, what side of the spectrum you're on. So that's my my biggest takeaway is to always be, you know, monitoring and observant of like the things that I'm doing. Am I doing this for Rob or am I doing this for God? And is this what God wants me to do? Yeah, I would say mine is, you know, being present, like always being mindful of being present and appreciative of where I am um, and keeping in mind that in that, in that appreciation and that gratitude, God, gives us more when he see like when he sees that we are present and grateful where we are and stewarding it well and so that's my takeaway what are y'all thoughts what are y'all thoughts on contentment what does it mean to be content to yeah. you great question great question i had some i just realized i had other scriptures and stuff we ain't get to but that's okay. okay um yeah you guys let us know What do you think contentment is? Are you content? Yeah. After reflecting on it and hearing us talk about it, maybe you feel like, yeah, I definitely am. Or maybe you aren't. And that's something you can take to God. So uh, very good. This is a great episode. And we will look to you guys for the next one. Be sure to like. Yes. Subscribe. And uh, yeah, let us know any other topics that you guys would want for us to talk about. So we'll catch you on the next one. Deuces.